back to Silent Hill 3, which is a much better game than Night Cry, Remothered, Crying is Not Enough, any of these things. It's a much more deserving game to talk about. And we are heading into the next area. These doors are the only place we can go. It doesn't seem like a building that anyone should be going into. It seems condemned. Criminal Origins. No, not that one. Not that condemned. There are no vi violently insane homeless people in this building, as far as we know. Looks like there's something down there on the floor, but I don't think we can actually get it. It might be like a no smoking sign, possibly, I think, but we cannot observe. Lock is broken. We cannot open the second floor door. You might wonder how we're going to get out of here by going up. You might wonder that. The third level ceiling has crumbled. For safety's sake, entry is forbidden. Alright. Third floor. Forbidden. But if the third floor ceiling is collapsed, then the fourth level floor has crumbled. For safety's sake, entry is forbidden. Continuing to go higher and higher up. Like a cardboard box here? No, actually just pieces of cardboard, I guess. Well, we get to the top, only one place we can go, to the fifth floor. This elevator is not working. Because electricity is off. Well, that does make sense. Instead of the elevator going to, like, a hell dimension or something. It's a toilet! I thought this building was still under construction, but it looks like this has been used. Plain old wash basin. Nothing special about it. Again, they say under construction, but the building kind of seems like, I don't know, that it's probably going to be demolished. Like, I mean, you look at this right here. I got handgun bullets. Lots of empty bottles and cans. Looks like somebody was living here. I, can, I can't see the fourth level floor. It's too dangerous to jump down from here. But what if... Ugh, a filthy mattress. Will I drop it into the hole? Absolutely. Got a health drink. There's a little home made up of cardboard boxes and old blankets. I guess a squatter was living here. But you know what? I don't see a squatter here now, so guess what? We were trying to get home all night. We made it. Silent Hill 3 comes to an end as Heather has made it back home. No monsters around here, so it's a lot better than everywhere else we've seen. Let's, ex let's explore our new home. The wall color here looks a little different here. The material is different, too. It might break if it hard enough. Heather th Heather tends to think of this uh, when she ever she looks at something. She judges whether or not it might break if you hit it hard enough. There we go. And it got a couple of legs in the wall. And a silencer. I can see legs through the broken part of the wall. I hope there's those are just mannequin legs, but I guess I'm not that lucky. Just like the black cat. I wish I hadn't seen that. I think I'll just leave it alone. Nothing I can do right now. Normally I'd report it to the police or something, but I guess that's not possible. Even if it was, I got bigger things to worry about right now. I remember, I remember people saying that Someone said that that's just supposed to be an in-joke, that it's supposed to be Solid Snake, since I'm wearing green, and that they have a, uh, 
Where is it? A silencer. Put on a handgun or some machine gun to muffle the blasts. Sure, why not? I'll do that. But let's not... We can't worry about the corpse in the wall. Whoever it might be. We have to look at this, this hole right here. Down we go. Alright, they thought they could keep Heather out of the fourth floor. They were wrong about that. However, that lock is broken. I don't think there are any items for us to find. But there is a hole right here. A convenient hole leads out to a scaffold. And loud noise with buzzsaw bugs. Let's just run by them. Alright, well, we're high up here. We're on the fourth floor, but this tarp is still here. The tarp goes up so high. Unfortunately, we find a hole in the tarp that leads to the next building. Let's hop on over. And this building looks like it's actually active. People are working here. Tabletop is covered with papers. I don't see any info that might come in handy, though. Mannequin catalog. I guess this is the reception area for a mannequin company? They only sell the best mannequins. Thermal carafe. Nothing inside. No coffee for Heather. Cardboard box filled with mannequin catalogs. I don't need that. Well, we don't have a map of this area. So we're going to do ha have to do some wall hugging. Lock's broken. Lock's broken. Lock is not broken, but we can hear growling. All right, we got dogs. And you know what, dogs? We're just gonna go to the gun. Where's that dog? There's a couple of dogs. I'm a hurtin'. Let's have a look around. Elevator doors are open a little. Space is too narrow to be of any use. Alright, so a little bit different situation with this elevator. The doors are not closed all the way. Before we do that, let's continue looking around this floor a bit. Monica's Dance Studio. It's a poster advertisement for a dance studio. Who cares about that right now? Oh, my feelings are hurt. What does that say? Summer Shape Up Program is, I believe, what that says. Elevator's not coming. Got to be used to elevators not arriving at this point. Here's Monica's dance studio right here, actually. Monica's Dance Studio. Let's go talk to Monica. Some kind of poster. Looks like there's going to be a performance soon. All right. Here's a, a couple of dogs. And there's an insane cancer. We like them. And uh, I think nothing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure nothing. This is just a room with monsters in it. So we can ignore that. And a map! Great. We got the office building map. Let's check out where we are. We're in the hilltop center. We're on the third floor. On the third floor, we got storefront posables. Monica's dance studio. 
Prindle and Enos Law Firm on fourth floor. We have One Stop Imports, which seems to dominate the fourth floor. On the fifth floor, we've got the Gallery of Fine Arts and KMN Auto Parts. Sixth floor, we got Water Glass, DD Ad, Mall Geological Survey, Everwhite Design and Construction. On the first floor, we have the Last Drop Cafe, an emergency staircase. Elberson Life Insurance is most of the first floor. On the second floor, Green Ridge Mental Health Clinic, emergency st- uh, Echo Interiors and Floor Fashions. So a number of companies in this building. Desk is all cluttered up. Doesn't look like anything I'm interested in. But I do want to rob this desk. The drawer is open just a smidge. Must be rusted or something. Can't pull it out any further. Well, maybe if we had some kind of tool that would help us with that. But we do not. Let's continue looking around. We got to, into a locker room. Nothing of interest in there or there, but there is something here. First aid kit, ample, very good locker. Some magazines here, nothing really important. One of them I've already read and the other just doesn't interest me. So let's see. One of them has a woman posing. The other one has like a couple of people... Says number styles number two. So I guess one of them is a fashion magazine. The other one might be naughty. Nothing at the end at the bottom here. All right. And well, we have a map now, so we can check out where drawer. Make sure that we know. Prinbull and Enos, what do they have to say about the situation? Prinbull and Enos, is not they're not in right now. They need to get their door fixed. How are you supposed to trust in Prinbull and Enos for your law needs if their lock doesn't even work? Their lock is broken. How do they get any clients? All right, so let's head to the stairs. Seems to be the only place we can go right now. All right, so where should we go? Well, we're trying to leave the building, right? We're trying to get home. So it sounds like the first it sounds like the most logical place for Heather to go would be down to the first floor and out the exit because where else would she want to go? And of, of course, of course. You didn't think it would be that easy. Plenty of stuff behind the stairs, but all junk. Let's check out the second floor, then. Mm, not that either. Yeah. Not the fourth one, either. Running out of options here. Fifth floor. All right, on fifth floor, we have Gallery of Fine Arts and KMN Auto Parts. Might Heather be an art connoisseur? I don't think she's old enough to drive yet. Here's the Gallery of Fine Arts. Let us peruse the artwork. Guest registration notebook on the reception desk. I think I can ignore it for now. The title is Repressor of Memories. What the hell kind of title is that? It's not relevant to this storyline at all. Looks like there was a picture here before. Only the caption's still around. Flame purifies all. Flame, eh? Well, I don't know what kind of picture used to be here. I'm not too fond of fond of fire. It's scary somehow. 
There's a price written here. Let's see. 5000 Man, what a world. I, I've gotten to the wrong business. Well, I mean, Heather hasn't actually, doesn't actually have a job yet, so she can't, really say, she can't really say that now. She has to get a job, and then she can say, I got into the wrong business. Now, this is a calm, relaxing picture. Mountain. Nice and simple. Heather has simple taste in art. And now that I'm looking at that, I realize that I have that scroll. Or it looks very similar. I showed that to the chat once, but that looks very similar to the one I have. A ceramic pot, not really my style. Whoops. Yeah. It's too big to use as a vase. So, of the pieces of art in this room, uh, Heather's only really a fan of the, of the mountain. Doesn't really like anything else here. All right, we're still in the gallery. Oh, hold on. Doo doo. Got a screwdriver. The flathead screwdriver was in a corner of the hallway, totally ordinary. Well, as we know, tools are the most important ob uh, items in a survival horror game or any adventure game, really. Uh, I have three more doors to check. One. To who? No, that one was open. And what do we have here? I got a katana. I, it's a katana, but I don't need another one of those. I think one is plenty. Too much stuff will just slow me down. You know, it, it, it does make more sense for her to be carrying this around than the mall. Short katana, about two feet long, pretty powerful and easy to handle. So not the first time we've seen a katana. There was one in Silent Hill 1, though Harry did take the longer katana while Heather is taking the shorter one. Lock is broken. The Gallery of Fine Arts office, but we cannot go inside. Came in auto parts. Let's see if we can go in here. We can. And it also sounds like we can try out our katana. timing his way off on the blocking. So yeah, Katana is a very good melee weapon. It's much faster than the Maul. And it does a good deal of power. It, ha it has a good deal of power. It does a good deal of damage. It can't do a good deal of power. That, that sentence is not a thing. Oh, hello. Yeah, there we go. 
Fortunately, since the insane cancer telegraphs his swings, it's much easier to block him than maybe these other enemies. And there we go. He just kind of deflates a little bit. Doing well in terms of health. I don't think there's anything in here. You just go into this small room and hey, here's a, here's a fun friend in here. Just, you know, if you want to play with them. Lock's broken. Lock's broken. All right, we were in an office. What office is this? Well, we're in KMN Auto Parts, so it's going to be an auto part related office. But there's just a bunch of serious looking papers on this desk. I don't need to take any with me. Man, I wish I could say the same, Heather. Some papers on these shelves, but that's it. Nothing useful. Shelf is empty. Camen Auto Parts. A poster for this company. I got a jack! Oil and foil and stuff like that. I can't use any of it. But this jack? So many uses. You can use this to raise a car when you need to change a tire or something. So just be on the lookout for a car. And we can change the tire. Nothing interesting on the poster. We are... Oh, it's unlocked. Ah, this leads back out into the, the main area. Well, we got some stuff. Got a katana. Got this jack. Let's head up to the next floor. So this fl uh, building has one more floor, the sixth. But that's broken. So, hey, not many options. I think there are only two floors that are available. So, now that we've been up here on the 5th, the only thing we can really do is go back down to the 3rd and see if we can use these items on anything. Well, there's a drawer right there, and there's also this elevator that was circled. Well, what could we do with the elevator doors that are open a little? Maybe we want to open them a lot. And maybe we could do that with a car jack. And there we go. The door downstairs looks open. But I can't get down there like this. Okay, so the second floor elevator doors are open. But how do we get down there? Well, we found this one other item, a screwdriver. And maybe we could use that to open a, a drawer. Which was, let's see. Whoop, no, I think it is this one. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> So this is rusted shut. Let's use our screwdriver. And whoever works here just kept a rope in their desk. For reasons, I guess. Eh, might as well save. No harm in saving often. What does this person in, Monica, in uh, Monica's dance studio use a rope for? I guess we'll never know. One of the myriad mysteries of Silent Hill. I'm sure you could find, like, a video or a wiki somewhere that goes into the lore of the rope that you find in the desk in Monica's dance studio. 
It was in the drawer at the office. It looks sturdy and well used. Sure, they use this robe all the time. But what for? Let's use it. I use the rope. That is a rope that is being used. I will use the rope to get downstairs. There we go. We're downstairs now. <clears throat> We're on the second floor, which is closer to the first floor, but is still not at the first floor. And we need to get to the first floor. All right, let's do our normal thing. Check all the doors. Until something opens. The, let's see, Echo Interiors and Floor Fashions not opening up. I would like to see those fashions, but... Oh, but this one is... Oh, we are seeing some fashions. Look at these fashions. These fancy floor fashions. Is this a reception area? There are catalogs scattered around. We're looking at something. Beef jerky, which I, I never use. A dog figurine looks real enough to bite. Or real enough to pet. Is that sort of like a glass half full, glass half empty thing? A dog could look real enough to bite or real enough to pet. Just depends on your perspective on dogs. Lock's broken. <clears throat> but this door is not. Not broken, I mean. It is open. The opposite of broken. Opposite of locked. Not broken. Here's a fake sink. Just for display, it can't be used. It's neither this toilet or this bathtub, though there's a dark red stain in the bathtub. Someone tried to use this bathtub, and then the salesperson came out and said, No! It's not actually hooked up to anything. You can't use it. And then they just started complaining and made a big stink about the whole thing. Green Ridge Medical Health Clinic is what that says. Oh. There's like a key, a key card in Silent Hill 1 that looks like that door. I don't know if that's deliberate. Like it has like three squares on it. Not everything has to be a reference, but that might be a reference. Um, okay, so we hit all the doors. Except one. Move these fashions some more. Display of tape, paper towel holders. Nothing to see here. Display of door handles. Nothing very interesting. A display of towel bars. The towels hanging on them are disgustingly dirty. What good are towel hangers if you don't have good towels? Cracked flower vase. Is this supposed to be for sale too? Who wants to buy a cracked one? Real. So this is a real lamp. It's not even electric. What? What does that mean? This is a real lamp. It's not even electric. I'm not sure what that means. And uh, we're in the back room for the floor fashions. Nothing interesting here. Well, the game is telling you maybe you should look at this. Okay, game. Let's look at the bathtub. Oh, I knew it. Again. 
Did she do this too? Well, we're back into some other world. And yeah, you might have noticed that that subtitle that we saw um, had no voice. That's because that there was supposed to be a voice sample from Silent Hill 1. Um, Harry was saying that to Sybil in the first game. But in this version of the game, that was taken out. I got handgun bullets. The mummy-like thing in the wheelchair is just a doll. Or... or is it? Something about it makes it me uneasy. Why, I wonder? Why is there a wheelchair in this... a wheelchair? How could... I don't understand. A wheelchair. How could this be? So, we got a doll in the wheelchair. We have a bad feeling about it, but we have... we're indifferent about this over here. I have a bad feeling about this. We don't care so much about this. We don't say anything if we try to observe it. We'll just leave that alone. All right, I hate these enemies. So we'll, we'll be seeing them through this level. But uh, first, let me look around in here. There's some, oh, there's something here. Find the Holy One. Kill her? They're not sure. Maybe. That's me. Who could have taken this photo? That's really creepy. Well, considering Douglas said he was hired to find us, maybe it was him? Don't know. But I, what I do know is that there's a save point right here. Mental Clinic. All right, Mental Clinic was inaccessible in the real world, but now we're in the other world. Let's see what we can find. Heather. That's what you're called now, isn't it? And who are you? The name's Vincent. Don't forget it, okay? I'm on your side. So you say. But how do I know you're not with her? Her? You mean Claudia? Please don't lump me together with her. She was totally brainwashed by that crazy old hag. Well, I guess crazy old hag is a bit harsh. She is your mother, after all. My mother? What do you mean? You don't remember? Ah, uh, so Harry didn't tell you anything. I guess he hid the truth to keep you on his side, eh? That figures. He's a pretty sneaky guy. Talk about my dad like that! Sorry. I apologize. Please, calm down. How do you know my father anyway? I know everything. I know about your past, too. Then tell me what's going on. You don't know even that? That's why I'm asking. If you know everything, then tell me how I can put an end to this! Not yet. Why not enjoy yourself a bit longer? Enjoy? I feel like I'm going crazy! Does this place get to you at all? Oh, it gets to me all right. I find it most fascinating. Wait! I'm not finished talking! I knew you were on her side. How do you figure? There's something wrong with you too. So, couple things about that. 
interesting tidbit that we learned is that um, Heather's dad is named Harry. Hmm, curious. Also, uh, we've now met Vincent, one of the primary characters in the game. Uh, something to mention about Vincent uh, is that, well, I mean, you may, have, you may or may not know that there is a movie adaptation of Silent Hill 3 called Silent Hill Revelations 3D, in which Vincent was played by Kit Harrington, and his role in the movie was Heather's love interest. And oh my god, why did they do that? I got Oxydol. I got health drink. Don't mix the two. I got first aid kit. I got first aid kit. I'm done with these shelves. We got so much from these shelves. There's a junior high school chemistry book here. When you pour diluted hydrogen peroxide onto manganese dioxide, oxygen is produced. Although oxygen will not burn on its own, it will help other things to burn. Hmm, so do we need to burn something, maybe? Let's look at what we just picked up. Oxidol. You use this stuff to disinfect cuts and stuff. It foams when you put it on. Well, nothing we can do with it right now. Look at this tiny TV. TV looks broken. The switch doesn't do anything. It's tiny. Look how small it is. I don't need these hangers. I only needed the one hanger in the mall to climb a ladder. I don't need any other hangers. Let's save again. Also, we could try to go back into the room with Vincent. I don't think I'll go into this room. That weird guy's in there. Probably a good call. So. Back out here. I hate this enemy. You'll probably understand why. Uh, let me look around for, like, try to open doors as we usually do. That's broken. Broken, of course. Broken. There's a dog. Two dogs. Broken. Broken. Elevator? Nope, not that one. Three dogs. There we go. There's an elevator. This elevator is a lot more intense than the previous one. All right, we got floors. The buttons are all rusty. Well, again, Heather is trying to get home. So let's go to the first floor, and let's see if we can finally leave the building. It's an interesting sound. It's a thing. What the hell? I don't want to get too close, but I don't think it'll attack me now. Why not? All bark and no bite. Anyhow, it's in the way. I can't get past it. It's on the ground floor, too. This ought to be the exit. What a pain. Let's look at the map. Yeah, this is where the exit is, but it has a monster in front of it. We can't get past. There's also a book on the floor. A book's lying here. It looks like a fairy tale. You know, we're just gonna bend down in front of this monster and read the book on the floor. Once upon a time, there was a monster living at the gates of a village. It was a very scary and a very bad monster. It would catch people and crunch them up with its big teeth. <clears throat> the villagers were afraid of the monster and no one would dare approach the gates. Everyone was stuck inside the village. When the king heard about this, he summoned his knights. The knights eagerly rode out to defeat the monster. Ha! Take that! Their swords slashed and their spears flashed, but the monster wouldn't die. The monster tossed the knights into its mouth one by one, horses and all! Whee! It's supposed to be like a, a horse's whinny. The, what was the king to do? He fretted and fussed and paced the floor, but could think of no solution. Soon after, the village, the village priestess came to the castle. She was a very kind and good person. The king asked her to defeat the monster guarding the gates. 
<laughs> the book's torn. The rest is missing. I remember reading this a long time ago. I think I borrowed it from someone. I don't remember how it ended, though. Grr. Didn't I read the story to the end? She does not remember how it ends. I like the design of the monster because it, you can't really describe it. Like, if you... It doesn't really look like anything. I think they did a good job at making something that doesn't look like anything, really. This is locked. What does this enter? This goes into Elberton Life Insurance. We cannot go inside there. Broken. Broken. Not broken. Is this register broken? There's money scattered all over. Register and the cash aren't much use to me right now. There's also a friend over there. Well, I mean, if we stay away from the friend... Uh, there are there are shotgun shells behind the friend. We might want to take that, but let's first look over look first look around. Here's a fridge. For some reason the only thing in the fridge is liver. Hope it's not rotten. I got pork liver. Fridge is empty, obviously. All that's left is a red blood stain and one god awful bloody stench. Alright. We took some food. This was in the cafe's fridge. Got it. Got to do something with it before it goes bad. Yeah, Heather was raised not to waste food. She doesn't want to eat it, but she has to find something to do with it. Maybe we can just yoink this. There we go. And just leave him to his nap. All right. So I think that's all the. Yeah, that is all the doors on the first floor. There's an emergency staircase, but that is not... That's not open. Well, okay. Let's continue looking around and see if we can find something to get this monster out of the way. Second floor? There we go. Okay, we already were on the second floor. This was the floor with the party going on. Let's just get in here and try somewhere else. Let's try the third floor. Not operating. Fourth floor. There we go. That's a welcoming sound. A bulletin board's fallen down here. Nothing useful written on it. Also, the floor is missing right there. So... That means that uh, whatever that door would be is unavailable. But there's only one shop on this floor, One Stop Imports. I'm interested in their selection. This one's locked. This one is also locked. No floor there. Let's be careful. And that's it for this floor. Everything else is blocked off. Let's try floor number five. And on floor five, we have Gallery of Fine Arts and KMN Auto Parts. We spent some time on this floor back in, you know, the, the normal world. So let's see what it's like here. Okay. This thing. I'm gonna have to deal with it. Deal with it. I, okay, this is why I hate this thing. This is what it does. It knocks you over. That's just... It, it touches you and it knocks you over. Okay, I think it's gonna stay down there. I just, I topple right over at the slightest touch. Right, 
Because you fall over like that, it makes it a pain to just run around. Because considering how easily they can just make you fall over. As opposed to other enemies, which might hit you as you run around, but you can just keep running. No more cigarettes for me. I quit for good. So apparently Heather had a smoking problem, which couldn't have been that much earlier in life. She, she doesn't have that much earlier in life. What would Harry say about that? I got a matchbook. Matchbook. This was in some company's conference room. It looks like it was used to light someone's cigarette. And that cigarette is still going. It's lasting quite a while. And this is just a small room with an enemy on the other side of that, and I don't think there's anything else here. No, that's it. Uh, was there anything... Yeah, just one right here. Okay, nothing there. There's a big sheet of glass in the way. It doesn't break when I hit it, so maybe it's not glass after all. I don't know why, but the world on the other side is calling me. A corridor with a wheelchair. A wheelchair? How could there be a... What the? But if there are references to other movies and such in this game, this is the most obvious one, as this is the box art to the movie Session 9. It's just, it's just basically they took... Like, I, they remade it in the game engine, but you look up the box art to Session 9, this is what it is. They like that movie, I guess. It's a pretty good movie. Pretty good horror movie. It's a very slow burn horror movie. Takes a while to get to where it's going. Well, we're back in the art gallery. It looks a little bit different now. But the missing painting is here. There's a caption under the picture. Flame purifies all. By these remains may a person find the road to paradise. I've seen this picture before. No, wait, I've never seen it. But I do know it somehow. Right? A woman in white, standing above some fire and people cowering. So, this image of the woman in white does look a little familiar, as this kind of looks like at the end of Silent Hill 1, when Alessa turned into an adult woman wearing white, as Dahlia was attempting to birth the god. It's kind of what this looks like. There's a bucket underneath it. Heather is not really acknowledging the bucket. First, let me take a look. Is there anything, any other doors we can look at here? No. All right. Well, it's talking about fire, and we got that chemistry notebook, chemistry textbook before, talking about how to make fire. We, maybe we could make some fire by combining the oxidol with the pork liver and the matches. And there we go. So, I am no chemistician, but I think the idea is that you combine the oxidol and the pork liver, which creates a chemical reaction which releases oxygen, and because of all the oxygen coming out of the bucket, you're able to light the painting on fire using the oxygen as fuel, and I guess, I don't, I guess is the idea. That's what we did. And it really, it like, opened like this little door behind it. 
and it's a it's a whole fun time behind that door. Here's some art. Heather is not commenting about the art. But there is a story down here. What might this be? The rest of that fairy tale I read earlier. The priestess accepted the king's request and went to the village gates. But when she saw the monster, she tried to convince it with words instead of killing it. Shut up, you. I'm going to eat you up. The monster didn't listen to a word the priestess said. But she kept trying to convince the monster to give up. It's wrong to eat people, you know? The monster grew very angry at this and attacked her, killing her with a single mighty blow. Well, things did not go well for the priestess. Let's see, where are we right now? We're w okay, we're making our way to One Stop Imports. I'm gonna try to run- oh, I'm gonna try to run past them, but you see what happens. They just kind of trip you. Or grab you like that. Lock is broken. But that's- we unlock that now. Lock is broken. This is open. Here's a bed. With a first aid kit- oh. And a monster underneath it. They tricked me. You approach the bed because it has the first aid kit and the ammo. And then, like, someone shoots out of the bed. And there, yep, there you go. Out of here. Broken. And we go through. We're continuing to make our way around one stop imports. That's unlocked now. Heading back to the elevator. All right, we found a room. It's kind of a large room, doesn't have monsters in it, which is good. I got a silver coin. The lamp's shining on some old silver coins I know I've seen before. I got one earlier, so I shouldn't really take any more. I mean, I'm no thief. I might act like one now and then, though. I don't need any more coins. There's standard coins and bills over here. Of course, it's not like money might not come in handy, and it goes without saying it might be nice to have, but I think I'll pass on it anyway. No, forget about it. Heather weighing the options of maybe taking the money. There's something written on the wall. Thus one's life turns to riches. What was a bag of silver coins is now the number in a book. Yet faith hath no price. Ah, but do people know this? It's a plain old vending machine. This one's selling canned drinks. Come to think of it, I am kind of thirsty. I feel weird drinking anything sold in a pl place like this, though. Well, maybe not that weird, because we do have... We have a coin, about the size of a quarter. I get the feeling it's really old. Size of a quarter can be used as a quarter. Well, we didn't get our soda. We got a life insurance key. I'm glad it gave us a good look at the vending machine so we could see it was a cold drinks brand vending machine. Probably selling canned drinks. Well, I mean, you'd think it would be selling canned drinks. It's actually selling canned keys. Life insurance key. I bought this from a vending machine. It looks real enough. There's a tag on the key that says Elberton Life Insurance. Well, I think there's only one locked door remaining in this building and it is indeed the one on the first floor to Elberton Life Insurance so let's head on over Whoop. Whoop. 
kind of tri tripped again. I hate these enemies. Let's go down to the first floor. The locked door was over this way. Which way to go? All right. Shorter way to the right, so let's see if any of those doors are open. That one is broken. And that one is broken. You always want to make sure you cross off all the options. Just put red X's on every door on the map. That's how you know you're playing a Silent Hill game. They're busy. I don't want to I don't want to disturb them. Alright, we found a room with just like a bunch of Tables, and a big hole in the middle, and a page. The end of that fairy tale. The king and his people shed tears at the death of the kind priestess. God took pity upon them, and, granting their wishes, healed the priestess. The priestess opened her eyes just as she has done every morning of her life. She went once more to the monster's lair. Fool, you wish to die again? No, this time it's your turn. The priestess had come to defeat the monster once and for all. As the priestess was very, very kind, she felt sad about this task, but it had to be done. Swords and spears won't work. Arrows and bullets will just bounce off. You can't kill me. The monster laughed, but the priestess used neither sword nor spear. She chanted but a single spell. To fui, ego eris. Do you know what happened then? The monster let out a huge cry and then died and vanished. Thus, the villagers were able to use their gates once more. Everyone lavished their gratitude upon the priestess, and they all lived happily ever after. Tu fui ego eris. Weird writing. <gasps> what was that? What was that? Well, those monsters that were here are no longer here. And we don't hear that sound that we were hearing before. And hey. The monster is gone. We slayed the beast with our words. And with that, we're outside. We're finally outside the building. And like for real outside, we're on the streets. There are cars. We're out in under the night sky. We finally made it out. After all that, all that work... I don't have anything else to do in this building. I have to get home. After all this work, we finally made it out to the streets. And we can have a look around. But there are, you know, there are blockages, like these gigantic tarps. The path is blocked. What's this doing here? It wasn't here when I passed by this morning. Oh, lost that text. It says something about it might have followed me. But there is an alleyway we can take down here. Taking us to a door. And what does this door say? It says Daisy Villa Apartment. Well, we do have our house key here. And it does say we live in Daisy Villa Apartment 102. So we made it. After all of this, we finally made it home from the mall. Heather might be a little late. She did tell Dad that she was going home right away. This is not my place. But it took... A lot longer for her to get there than uh, she thought she would. This is not my place. This is not my... That's not my place. 
Just a dust chute. Nothing to worry about. It's not like anyone's going to toss, like, a box of juice down that. Why would someone do such a thing? That's not my place. I don't need to use the elevator. My apartment is number 102 on the ground floor. Don't need to do- don't need to use the stairway. We're on the ground floor. Mailbox is empty. But this is my place! Why should I leave the apartment? Let's save. What's this doing here? That really pisses me off. It's like having someone spit on your sacred place. Some people pay good money for that. Looking at it makes my head hurt. What does it mean? Let's save. All right, well, here is room number 102. Let's head on inside. Finally, Heather has made it home. Oh. Dad, I'm home. Listen, something really crazy is going on. I think we should... Dad? Dad? We've got a boss fight on our hands. We're going up against the missionary who killed our dad. Oh, oh there he is. I was, was a little confused about Claudia's line, saying, well, she only ordered it. You know, this is the guy who really did it. Like, does that make it better, Claudia? I don't know. 
We can block our shots, but if... Whoop. He's running. He's a runny boy. And in circles, one of us will catch up to the other. Oh, gotta reload. I just... Calm down? How am I supposed to do that? My father is dead! He's murdered! Get out! This is all your fault! If it weren't for you... I'm sorry. Then go! If it'll make you feel better, I will. Is he okay like this? What else can I do? There's no one here to give him a decent burial. <sighs> I'm sorry, Dad. What do you do now? I'm going to Silent Hill. What's in Silent Hill? I don't know. Do you think it's safe? Of course it isn't. I don't know what kind of hell is waiting for me there, but I've got no other choice. I don't care about God or paradise. If that's what she believes, then fine. But she won't get away with what she did. When I find her, I'll kill her myself. Revenge doesn't solve anything. Maybe not, but that's what I'm going to do. How are you going to get there? None of your business. I'll give you a ride. I don't need your help. Yeah, but it's too far to walk. Besides, I'm partly responsible for this. I'll bring the car around back. Come by when you finish saying goodbye. You know, you might die too. That's fine. Nobody's gonna cry over my grave. Well, unfortunately, Heather's trip home did not end how she hoped. I'll find that woman to make her pay. I promise I will. I wonder if my dad would be mad at me for thinking that way. I'll be back, Dad. I promise I'll come home soon. Will it be before the landlord finds Dad in this room? Who, 
Who can say? Well, a lot happened in this scene. As, uh, well, we saw the dad. And you could probably tell it was, you might be able to tell it was supposed to be Harry Mason from Silent Hill 1. Because he was wearing the same clothes that he was in Silent Hill 1 all these years later. Turns out that Claudia's plan the whole time was to kill Harry. She said it was for revenge for 17 years ago. Dad's bookshelf. There's nothing unusual about it. And revenge for 17 years ago would refer to Harry killing the god in Silent Hill 1. There's nothing odd about the TV or the VCR. Of course, Dahlia's plan was to use Alessa and Cheryl to summon the god, and they didn't go too well. Didn't Harry did put a stop to that. There's nothing to do in the kitchen. I'm not hungry at all. Who could eat something in a situation like this? So this would confirm that Claudia has something to do with the cult that Dahlia was part of. But you probably guessed that. Dad. Why did you have to die? You told me you were the strongest man in the world. Liar. Just the regular TV. There's nothing different about it. No need to go back on the roof. That monster's dead now. Besides, Douglas is waiting outside. So we do have to get ready. Because Douglas is saying that he will take uh, Heather to Silent Hill, and that's where she wants to go. I don't remember I got when exactly when I got this, but I think I got this doll at a garage sale. I still like it, but there's nothing I can do with it right now. I'm exhausted, but I don't think I can sleep now. Morning always comes. It's corny. But it's true. But if your eyes are closed, it always feels like night. That's the hero's line from this movie. I always liked that line, but now it just seems stupid. Got a stun gun. And a battery. And another battery. This is my dresser. I don't need to change. I'll leave it alone. I don't have a map of this. I don't have a map of my home. Most people don't. Let's have a look at our weapons. Stun gun. High voltage to zap the bad guys. It has to touch them though, so it's very short range. My worry wart dad gave this to me just in case. Well, it's a pity that we didn't have this when we went to the mall. Heather has her own bathroom. Fancy. I think that's all for Heather's room. Well, we're not changing clothes. We're not going to take a shower or eat anything, so... Nothing for us to do. I can't reach anybody, not the police or the church. Go outside. I just met some guy named Vincent. Vincent? He's a friend of yours, right? Well, I'm not sure. He said when we get to Silent Hill, to look for a guy named Leonard, and he gave me this map. What do you want to do? We can't trust him, but we've got no other choice. Here, take this too. What's this? Your father was holding it.
started raining. Why are you sleeping? I'm awake. You cold? What's the deal with Silent Hill anyway? It used to be a nice, quiet little town. But now... You've been there? Once. On a missing persons case. Never did find him. But I'll tell you, that's one screwed up town. My line of work... You hear a lot of nasty rumors. I was born and raised there. <sighs> Sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. No offense taken. Anyway, I thought you grew up in Portland. What's wrong? Feeling sick? My head's pounding like the worst hangover ever. Maybe your car's sick. No. I'm just trying to remember. My childhood. Something terrible happened in Silent Hill 17 years ago. A woman named Dahlia. She tried to summon the ancient god of the town. She offered up her very own daughter. That's crazy. Maybe so, but it worked. girl gave birth to a god. Huh? You see, that girl had special powers. Powers? Her classmates called her a witch. She could make things happen with her mind. She could kill people just by wishing for it. In the end, that god was killed by a single person. My father, Harry Mason. I guess it wasn't much of a god if it could be killed by a human being. But I think Claudia's trying to do the same thing again. I've been chosen as the sacrifice. You've got some kind of power in you too? No, I can't. After the god was killed, the girl reappeared. She was holding a baby in her arms. Before she died, she gave the baby to my father. He loved me just like I was his very own daughter. Even though he didn't know who or what I was. So sudden. I never had a chance to tell you, to tell you how happy you made me. I'm gonna head for that Leonard guy's house. 
you check out the hospital. Get the map, right? Yeah. Gonna be okay alone? I'm not a child, you know. Are you sure it's not you who's afraid to be alone? <sighs> You're right. I am afraid. I'm 50 something years old. I never see nothing like this. I still feel like I'm dreaming. <laughs> More like a nightmare, I'd say. Yeah, I want to wake up and have a smoke already. Meet me back here when you finish looking around the hospital, okay? Roger. All right, we've made it to Silent Hill. And uh, more importantly, this uh, that cutscene that we just got was confirmation that this is a direct sequel to Silent Hill 1. Now, if I remember this right, when this game came out, they never advertised that. And in fact, if you look at the back of the box for Silent Hill 3, they call Heather, Heather Morris instead of Heather Mason. Uh, I believe they did keep it a secret that this was a direct sequel to one. So when you were playing this game, you didn't actually know that this was a, a this had a connection to one. Because, of course, if you played two, that was a separate story altogether. So you play three. It starts off seeming like it's separate because Heather seems like a new character. You don't know who this is or Douglas or Claudia. But then you get to this cutscene here and you realize, oh, this is actually a direct sequel to part one, which is a pretty cool twist uh, when when you first experienced it, uh, because you probably didn't know that when you started playing the game. So what Heather was describing to Douglas there was either the good or good plus ending for Silent Hill 1, when adult Alessa manifested a baby, uh, gave it to Harry, and Harry escaped with the baby. That was 17 years ago, and then the baby grew up to be Heather of today, 17 years old. Now, the difference between good and good plus was whether or not Sybil survived. Uh, I do believe good, where Sybil dies, I believe that is supposed to be the canon ending. Unfortunately for Sybil, she did not make it. So this is now also a game that confirms which ending in Silent Hill was the canon ending. Because before that, you didn't know which one was supposed to be the correct one. Um, but now we've made it to Silent Hill. Heather is a girl on a mission. She wants to find and kill Claudia. This has got to be a coincidence. But still, it's pretty weird. Who could have done this? Got a save point in our, in our motel room. Motel. So, Douglas is going off on his own. Heather is going to be looking on her own. Looking for this Leonard fellow that Vincent told them that they had to find. And uh, as we continue on with Silent Hill 3, we will enter the actual town of Silent Hill. As the, the game up to this point has not been taking place there. We're now finally in Silent Hill. We're now going to look for this Leonard and see how he might be able to help us against Claudia as we now actually know what this game is about. Previous to this, the game, the whole game has just been about Heather trying to get home, but now this game actually has a plot. And uh, now that we know that, we will continue on with Silent Hill 3 next time as Heather's quest to get home has turned into Heather's quest for revenge. We'll see if she gets her revenge as we continue.